Congratulations, your offer to buy a home just got accepted. What now, you're probably wondering. Well, there are lots of things that need to happen between now and the close of escrow. You may have specified a 30-day close in the purchase agreement or possibly an even shorter closing period. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the steps during escrow, discuss the process, and prepare you on what to expect. The very first thing that needs to be completed is the earnest money deposit, or EMD, as agents and escrow professionals like to refer to it. This is the initial deposit that you make in escrow after your contract is accepted by the seller. By default, the contract specifies a three-day business period from the date of acceptance that the deposit needs to be made. In many cases, and especially in our local market, we shorten this period to one business day and the deposit needs to be made by wire transfer. Expect a representative from the escrow company to reach out immediately the same day if during business hours or early the next morning if after 5 p.m. If you haven't heard from them by 9.30 or 10 a.m., then you should reach out directly with me or the escrow agent if you have their contact information. The escrow agent will provide you with the wiring instructions that you'll need to use to wire your earnest money. You'll likely receive these instructions in a secure email from the escrow company's representative. This is a very important detail to remember. Anytime you're wiring money, make sure to confirm those wiring instructions over the phone with the correct person at the escrow company and find out the name of the bank you are wiring to. Wire fraud is real and it's important to take the necessary steps to protect yourself. Also, depending on your bank, you may be able to wire the money from your account online or you may have to go physically into the branch and wire it from there. Just remember to always confirm the wiring instructions. When you initiate the wire, the receiving bank should match the name of the bank given to you by the escrow company. Be sure to initiate the wire as early as possible. Wire cutoff times on the West Coast are 2 p.m., which is 5 p.m. Eastern. If the wire has not been received by 2 p.m., it can only be picked up the following business day. Great, now that we got the wire completed, here's what you can expect moving forward. An important detail to clarify in our local market the title company and the escrow company are the same company. Here, one company satisfies both functions and therefore we use the terms title and escrow company interchangeably. The escrow period is the time to finalize and get your loan approved, do your buyer diligence, and utilize this time efficiently so you can prepare to move into your new home. This is the time that you'll want to perform any inspections. In our local market, most of the offers that are accepted are not contingent on the buyer inspecting the property. Even if the offer is a non-contingent offer, you may still wish to perform inspections to find out more about the property. This might be the case if there were certain aspects of the seller's inspection that needed more clarification, or if you just want a more detailed inspection so you know more about the home that you're buying. Keep in mind that a non-contingent offer for inspections essentially means that you have already done your investigations and you have removed your right to cancel based on any issues surrounding the property. If you do your inspections and you do find something and want the seller to repair the issue, the seller will not be obligated to do anything and you may not have sufficient recourse to cancel the contract and retrieve your deposit. If something substantial comes up in the inspection findings, we may be able to get more details from the seller and understand what options are available to rectify. But this will be a case by case situation. Also during this period, you'll want to start to get estimates for the repairs, schedule a fumigation, termite treatments, or any updates you'll want to do to the property before you move in. These appointments will have to be coordinated through the seller's agent. In most cases in our local market, buyer's contingencies are not common. If you do have a contingency along with your offer, you will be expected to remove that contingency within the time specified in the agreement. 
Contingencies are removed explicitly with the contingency removal form. If the contingency has been satisfied, the form removing the applicable contingency will be sent out via DocuSign for your signature. If the contingency has not been satisfied, we'll need to discuss how to proceed, if an extension needs to be requested, or if the agreement needs to be canceled. Here's a quick overview of the process so you know what to expect in the coming weeks. Over the next week, we'll be reviewing the paperwork associated with the transaction. This paperwork consists of all the disclosures, inspections, and reports that were provided by the sellers. Perhaps initials or signatures were missed. These documents will be sent out to you via DocuSign for signatures. If you have any questions regarding any documents that were sent, please contact me. I'll go over them directly with you. We'll be confirming that we have all the information needed in our files and that all signatures are in order. Once we have a ratified contract, we'll need to send the contract along with the preliminary title report to your lender. We can forward this to your lender or provide it to you to send to your lender. Before we send it, I will wait to confirm the lender with you. Some buyers may not have settled on a lender. They may be pre-approved with the lender, but want to shop other lenders to see what rates are available. This may not be recommended, but it happens among buyers. Understand that if you want to shop rates of another lender during this time period, the decision to select a lender must be made quickly so as not to jeopardize the agreed upon close of escrow date. Please do not take more than one to two days to settle on your lender that you'll be using and you must ensure that the lender you'll be working with can close within the specified time frame of the agreement. Please provide us with the details of the lender if different from the lender on the pre-approval. We'll also need a letter of pre-approval from the new lender and need to inform the listing agent that we intend to use another lender. The lender will be tasked with ordering the appraisal and begin their work to get the loan documents ready for escrow and meet the close of escrow date on the accepted purchase agreement. If you're purchasing a single family home, you'll need to obtain a homeowner's insurance policy. Your lender will require that you have the home insured from the date of closing and that your insurance is always current. We do not make recommendations on the insurance companies. We suggest that you contact the company that insures your vehicle as they generally provide discounts if you bundle your insurance. The insurance company will have questions about the home pertaining to its age, construction, and condition. You may not know these answers, so please feel free to check with us regarding those questions if you do not know the answer. The insurance company may want to inspect the home or do a drive-by to assess the condition. They will provide a quote for insurance and you'll need to send that quote to the title company. If you have questions regarding replacement dwelling coverage amounts, please feel free to ask me. Before you made an offer on the home, there is a natural hazard disclosure that disclosed if the home is in a flood zone. If the home is in a flood zone, you are likely to be required by your lender to obtain a separate flood insurance policy. You'll want to work with your insurance person to obtain this policy. There's a probability that the home may be in a flood zone but may not need to have required flood insurance. The way this works is through an elevation certificate where the home is inspected by an engineer to determine its exposure to the flood zone. An elevation certificate can reduce your flood insurance or remove it completely. If you're unsure about this, please let me know. If the property is a condo or a townhome, your hazard insurance is likely covered by the HOA. Your lender will still require a separate policy, commonly referred to as an HO6 policy, 
which covers the damage to the interior of a structure. So please contact your insurance carrier and request a quote for an H06 policy. I, along with my team, will be providing you with weekly updates on how the transaction is progressing. Initially, you'll be working closely with your lender to satisfy all the lender requirements. The lender will likely need updated information, such as account statements that you provided during your pre-approval process, but may have additional conditions that need to be met. The priority will be to satisfy the lender's requirements until the loan is fully approved. The first step for the lender is the appraisal. The lender needs a third-party assessment of the home's value, and this is what the appraisal satisfies. You will likely hear from your lender or us as to when the appraisal is scheduled. Your lender will be notified of the results of the appraisal and can share the appraisal document with you. Expect the appraisal documents to be completed within three days after the physical appraisal inspection. Since you'll be working very closely with your lender, your lender will likely inform you as they are informing us of when the following occurs. The appraisal report is completed, loan docs are cleared, loan is approved, closing disclosure is sent out. As we get closer to the transaction close date, we'll update you and help you to coordinate the following events. Coordinate signing with the escrow company, coordinate the walkthrough, utilities transfer, close of escrow. Of course, if there are any issues that come up during the transaction, we will contact you. We will do our best to update you on any foreseeable delays that may occur. If for any reason you have any questions, please just feel free to call me directly. When your loan documents arrive at the title company, you can schedule your buyer sign off. Here in California, we sign our escrow paperwork prior to the closing and authorize the escrow company to perform certain actions on our behalf. Expect to sign a few days prior to the actual closing date. Some of the documents that you will be signing at escrow will require a notary, principally the loan documents. This will need to be signed in person. Also, they will need to be signed by a notary in the United States. If you're planning on a trip outside the United States, during the escrow period, special arrangements will have to be made. The escrow officer will reach out to you to schedule your sign-off once they have everything ready to be signed. The sign-off can be scheduled at the escrow office or anywhere in the U.S. via a remote notary. Be advised that using a remote notary incurs an additional cost. For the sign-off, you'll need a valid and current U.S. ID, which could be a driver's license or a passport. During your sign-off, you'll review the closing statement with all the closing costs and sign your loan paperwork. You'll not have much time to review all the documents when you're signing, so it's best to request them in advance from your escrow officer to review them so your signing will go smoothly. Estimated closing date with closing costs, tax paperwork, escrow authorization paperwork, lender's loan documents and some disclosures. You'll be signing some tax forms and documents authorizing the escrow company to carry out the transfer of title. The loan documents generally reach escrow three to five days prior to the close, but sometimes can be sent the day before. This depends on the lender and their process. If there are any delays in the loan documents, this may result in a delay of closing. Your estimated closing statement will provide you with the amount that you'll need to bring into escrow. This amount is your down payment, plus your closing costs, minus the money currently in escrow from your earnest money deposit. This amount should be at the escrow company one day prior to the close of escrow. Escrow will work with you on how to wire this money to their bank. Remember to verify all wiring instructions with your escrow officer and do not use any numbers you've received from an email that you have not verified. Once the lender has received and reviewed the loan documents you've signed, they will send the file to the funder to prepare the loan to be funded. Escrow will work closely with the lender to fund the loan. Normally the loan funds the day before the closing date, 
but sometimes loans can be funded the same day as closing. Once all the funds are in escrow, the transfer documents will be recorded at the county recorder's office. This typically happens in the morning of the next business day. This is officially the close of escrow and when the property becomes yours. We generally get confirmation of the deed recording around 12 noon. We will update you on each of these milestones and what to expect so you can follow along. A few days prior to the closing is when you'll want to schedule the utilities to be transferred into your name or account. At this point in the transaction, we will have a very firm close of escrow date, at which point you will want to inform the utility companies that you'll want service to be placed in your name. Utilities generally consist of the following. Water, via the local water company. Garbage, if the property's in San Jose, this will be paid through property taxes. If it's a condo complex where the community collects garbage, then this will not be necessary. Electricity may be Silicon Valley Power if Santa Clara or PG&E if elsewhere. Gas is generally through PG&E. We will provide you with the contact information for the various utility companies in your new homes area. If you're planning a fumigation at the close of escrow, understand that the fumigation company will arrange for the gas to be disconnected. You'll have to call the gas utility to reconnect once the fumigation has been completed. The gas company will require that someone be home for this appointment as they will want to check the various gas appliances for any leaks. Phone and internet. Generally AT&T or Comcast are the main providers, but there may be other providers that are available in your area. You may want to schedule this in advance to ensure that you will have connectivity once you move in. Alarm companies. I generally get calls from several companies wanting to get your contact information so they can sell you their service. If you're interested, I'll pass on this information. A few days prior, we will schedule a walkthrough. The walkthrough is for you to verify the condition of the property and if there were any requests for repairs, if those requests have been completed. The main purpose of the walkthrough is for a final verification of the condition of the property prior to the close of escrow. Per the contract, the seller is obligated to maintain the property in the same condition as when the offer was accepted. Also, if the seller was living in the property during the sale or if there was staging furniture in the property, this is an opportunity for us to inspect the home with all the furnishings gone and see if there was any concealed damage. If there's any damage to the property that was not disclosed, this is the only opportunity we'll have to communicate that to the sellers in the hopes that this will be rectified before the close of escrow. If there is a rent back where the seller will remain in the home after the close of escrow, it is still recommended to do a walkthrough. Once the sellers vacate, we can do another walkthrough and determine if the deposit can be released back to the sellers. Other details we will obtain from the seller will be any information regarding warranties on any appliances or systems of the home, keys to the property or mailboxes, garage door openers, days of garbage collection, contact information for gardeners. Be advised that you will be mailed a closing package from the escrow company with the final closing statement. You'll want to look through this paperwork as there will be a small check from the title company for any overpayment from the closing. Also, you'll want to hold on to this closing statement for your future records to factor in your cost basis of the home when you sell. Here's a summary of all the communications to expect in the coming weeks. Just because the transaction closed doesn't mean my work is done. I want to make sure that everything goes smoothly for you in the coming weeks as you transition into your new home. In the scenario where the seller is occupying the home after the close of escrow, I will be there to coordinate the handoff and transfer of occupancy. 
We'll perform another walkthrough with you once the seller has vacated and work with the other agent regarding the release of the seller's security deposit. I'll set up a time when I'll meet with you and go over some basic details about your home and important maintenance to be aware of. We'll go over shutoffs for the water and gas meters, electrical panel, sprinkler systems and sprinkler controller, and all the small details that you should know as a homeowner. I'll help you coordinate the fumigation or termite treatments and place the lockbox on the property for the fumigation company. If you're planning on getting repairs or updates done to the home, I'll introduce you to my list of preferred vendors and after finalizing the details, help you facilitate these repairs and updates and be available for any questions or problems that may arise. Your new asset will require some care and attention and my goal is to set you up for success as a new homeowner. As you can see, there's quite a lot that happens during the escrow process. It's my and my staff's responsibility to guide you through escrow as much as possible and remind you of any important dates and what to expect. As a buyer, you'll be mainly in charge of working closely with the lender to satisfy their requirements for the loan's approval. Also keep in mind that no escrows are exactly the same and it's not uncommon for problems or delays to arise during the escrow period. We'll work with you to help you resolve those problems, communicate with the other agent, and work towards satisfying our contractual obligations. I know this is a lot and don't expect to have this fully memorized. We will keep you updated along with the transaction. I try to go over everything, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.